Hello, I'm Jackie from IELTSJackie.com. In this video, you'll find out how to answer name matching questions. This is a popular type of question, so there's a good chance that you'll get one in your IELTS reading test. They can seem quite simple at first sight, as it's easy to find the location of the answers. However, your ability to interpret the text will be put to test here. To make sure that you're well prepared, I cover five things in the video. An explanation, the skills you'll need, key tips, a proven strategy to answer this type of question and a sample question with answers. We'll start by looking at what you have to do for name matching questions. Generally, the task is to match a list of people's names to a list of statements using the information in the text to make the correct matches. The names will normally be of researchers, experts or scientists. And the statements will usually be research findings, theories, dates or places. Name matching questions test several different reading skills, especially your ability to scan the text for names, recognise synonyms and paraphrasing, and use context to guess meaning. They also require you to recognise at least one of the following. An expression of opinion, a theory and research findings. Now for some key tips. Tip 1. The statements will not appear in the same order in the text as they are listed in the instructions. Neither will the names appear in the same order as they are listed. Tip 2. The statements will usually paraphrase information in the text. Tip 3. Some of the names might be shortened in the text to an initial and surname, or just a first name or last name might be used. For example, Gregor Borek might be shortened to G. Borek, Gregor or Borek. Tip 4. It can be helpful to have different coloured pens to underline the different names in the text. Tip 5. Don't spend too long on any one statement. If you get stuck, move on to the next one. Come back to it when you've eliminated other statements and there are thus fewer to choose from. Tip 6. In some test papers, there will be more statements than there are names and you will be told in the instructions that you can use a letter, i.e. a name, more than once. Here's a sample question from a past test paper so that you can see how it's set out. This is a good example of a question where you can use a name more than once. Now let's look at the strategy for answering this type of question. Start by carefully reading the statements and try to understand what they mean. Don't spend too long on this but get the general meaning if you can. Then scan the text for the names and underline them. Do this before reading the text. You'll find them extra quickly by focusing on the capital letter at the start of the name. Some names will appear more than once. Using a different coloured pen for each name is very helpful and ignore any names not in the list of answers. The easiest names to match to a statement would be those that appear only once in the text. Do these first. This will also quickly eliminate the matching statements from further consideration, thus narrowing the options for the rest of the names. The opinion, research findings or theory of the person may be stated either before or after their name appears. So, read the section of text around the name to locate it. Carefully read the details of their opinion, research findings or theory and as you do so, think of likely synonyms that might be used in the matching statement. Then, go to the list of statements and look for a match. When you're sure you have the correct match, fill in your answer and cross through the statement. Repeat this process with the rest of the names. We're now ready to work on our sample question. Please note that this example is not from a real IELTS reading test paper. I created it myself to demonstrate the strategy I've just outlined and to give you an opportunity to practice it. 
The text in your test will be longer and each name may appear several times. Other names not in the list may also be included in the text. Here are the statements and the list of names. The next two slides contain the text. I've had to divide it due to lack of space, but I've created PDFs of both the instructions and the text that you can download to make them easier to work on. You'll find the link to them in the notes below this video. Here's the text, but you don't need to read it yet, as we need to do some work on the statements and names first. Now I'm going to show you step by step how I answer this question. First, I read the four statements and try to understand what they mean. Picking out key words such as yoga, stress and relaxation helps me with this. I then scan the text for all the names in the list and either highlight or underline each name with a different coloured pen. You can see this partly done in the slide. In the strategy overview, I recommended matching the names that appear the fewest times in the text first. However, in this short practice text, the names don't appear multiple times, so I'm going to work down through the list from A to D. So, I'm going to start with the name Caroline Smith. It appears in paragraph 3. I read around the name to find out the main aim of her study. It was to compare the effect of yoga and relaxation on stress and anxiety. The key words would seem to be compare and relaxation. So I now go back to the list of statements to see if I can spot them or synonyms of them. They're both in the second statement, which is the advantage of yoga compared to relaxation in decreasing stress and anxiety. I read the statement carefully to check that the meaning is the same as in the text. I also quickly check the other statements to make sure that none others have any similar meanings. I'm sure I have the correct match, so I fill in my answer, 2A, then cross out the statement and move on to the next name. The next name on the list is Jayadeva Yogendra. It's in the last paragraph and appears as J. Yogendra. Reading around the name, I note that this researcher studied patients with heart disease. So I start with these keywords and check the statements for them. I find them in statement three. The significance of yoga in relation to existing cases of heart disease. I read the statement carefully then go back to the text to see if all the information matches. It does. I also do a quick scan of the text around the names that I haven't yet matched to see if heart disease appears again in case there's a better match. I don't see it again, so I'm happy that I have the correct answer, which is 3B. The findings of the next scientist, Andreas Michelson, showed a significant reduction in their levels of cortisol. I don't really know what cortisol is, but I do understand the general meaning of the sentence it's in, so it doesn't really matter. I read the remaining two statements to see if the word cortisol appears. It doesn't. However, in statement one, I do spot the word decreasing, which is a synonym of the word reduction. I also notice that there's a match for the word hormone in both the statement and the sentence in the text. The answer is clearly 1C. This leaves me with one name and one statement. I can assume that they match, but quickly double check in case I made an error with the previous match. This time I identify the key words in the statements first. They are circulatory system. Starting with the statement this time will be quicker, as I already know which statement I'm working with. It's the only one left. I don't find a match, but the term cardiovascular system does appear. Even if I didn't know what either of these terms meant, I could still make a good guess from the context that they are the same thing. I'm confident that the last name and statement do match, so the task is complete. The answer is 4D. In the real test, expect there to be more use of synonyms and paraphrasing than in this example. Here I wanted to focus 
on how to move backwards and forwards from text to statements without worrying too much about the language. So I hope this has been helpful. Now practice this strategy with past test papers and you'll soon improve your speed as well as your confidence. Thank you for watching. You'll find lots more help with the IELTS reading test, including step-by-step -step instructions on how to answer the other types of reading questions in my other videos and on my website, ieltsjackie.com. There's a link to the website in the notes below this video. I'll see you there. Goodbye for now.